In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are gathered here today to witness the marriage between Kyle Davis and Claudia Rommelsbach. Claudia and Kyle, here we are. Hi. The big day is finally here. I promised I'd ask you this. Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> it's a big day, so it's okay to be a little bit nervous. Uh, but I really want to encourage the two of you to enjoy this occasion. You've come together here with all of us uh, for a very special occasion. You've come here to make vows to each other, to commit yourselves to each other before God and these witnesses. You have come here to start your married life. And we want to thank God today. We want to pray to Him. We want to worship Him in song. And we want to speak his blessing over you and get you married. I hope that you experience all of that as a blessing. Uh, make it an occasion to remember. Of course, the welcome is not only for these two up front here. I'd like to welcome all of you, family and friends of Kyle and Claudia. Thank you for being here today and celebrating this day with us. Herzlich willkommen. Schön, dass ihr da seid. Schön, dass wir diesen Tag zusammen feiern dürfen. Es ist einfach was Wunderbares und ich wünsche euch allen Gottes Segen an diesem Tag. Thank you for being here today to show your support for these two and for their marriage. I think that's something important and I certainly know that they appreciate that. During the service, once or twice, I'm going to disappear to join the brass band. Please don't be uh, <laughs> yeah, alarmed if the pastor suddenly disappears. Uh, I hope that you all enjoy the ceremony today and experience it as a blessing. Before you take a seat, we have to start with a legal question. And so I ask you first, Kyle, do you, Kyle Davis, declare that as far as you know, there is no lawful impediment to your proposed marriage with Claudia Rommelsbacher here present, and that you call on all here present to witness that you take Claudia Rommelsbacher as your lawful wife, then say, I do. And do you, Claudia Rommelsbacher, declare that as far as you know, there's no lawful impediment to your proposed marriage with Kyle Davis here present, and that you call on all here present to witness that you take Kyle Davis as your lawful husband, then say, I do. I do. This is always excellent news. <laughs> uh, it means that we can continue with the ceremony, and we are going to do that by singing the first hymn together. You can take a seat for that, so can the bridal party. And we will sing together, How Great Thou Art.
Der Apostel Paulus hat geschrieben, einen anderen Grund kann niemand legen als den, der gelegt ist, welcher ist Jesus Christus. No one can lay any foundation other than the one that is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Let us pray for Kyle and Claudia as they begin their marriage and build it on this foundation. Lasst uns beten and I ask you to stand as we pray. Father God, we thank you that we can be together here today to celebrate the marriage of Kyle and Claudia. Du hast Mann und Frau füreinander geschaffen und hast versprochen, dass du die Ehe segnen würdest. Wir bitten dich, sei dieser Verheißung getreu und segne diese beiden. We pray that you will bless them and that you will fill them with your spirit. Help them to begin their marriage in your name and to build it on the one foundation that is laid and that always remains stable, Jesus Christ. Das bitten wir durch Jesus Christus, unseren Herrn. Amen. Hallo und er soll Gottes sein. sei mit euch und Friede von Gott, unserem Vater und dem Herrn Jesus Christus. Peace be with you. Amen. Please have a seat. So age has caught up to me and I've had to wear glasses for a while now. Uh, at some stage even my long arm wasn't quite long enough uh, for me to be able to hold the tablet far enough away so that I could actually see what I was doing. Now, Glasses help with that. But I've got a question for you. What's the most important thing about glasses? They fit on my head. These are all important things. You know what I think? 
The most important thing about glasses is what you do with them. <laughs> it really doesn't help if you're too proud to wear them and you leave them on your desk because then things stay fuzzy. It doesn't help if you wear them wrong, you know, doing this because then you still can't read properly. The most important thing about glasses is what you do with them. And what I want to tell you today is that it's exactly like that with marriage. The most important thing about marriage is what you do with it. The two of you chose a wedding verse from 1 Peter 3 verse 8, and it is filled with things that have to do with relationship, with your marriage, with your lives. Things to do that help to make those things better, to make them good. So I want to read the whole verse to you. Live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit blessing. Right in the middle of that verse was the word love. Love, I think, summarizes everything that we as Christians are called to be. It summarizes everything that we should be to make a relationship or a marriage work. And the rest of the words in this verse kind of unpack that a little bit. So, for example, be humble. That literally means make yourself a little bit smaller. So don't make yourself so big that you can't see the other person and their needs. Also, don't make yourself so small that your needs get lost. Make yourself a little bit smaller, the other person a little bit bigger, so that you see them and so that you see what they need. And then make the effort to do what they need. Be humble. Love is that. Love is also sympathy and compassion. It has to do with feeling. Feeling for others. And taking their feelings into consideration. All important. Of course, don't make it all about feelings. Don't let feelings rule everything, because that generally doesn't end up in a great place. So if the other person doesn't make you feel so great, then don't respond to that with payback. Take a breath, stop, think. Do what promotes, as this verse says, harmony and blessing and new beginnings. To do that, you'll need some tools along the way. We chatted about some of them in the prep for today. Communication is really important. That's not just about talking. That's important too. Say what needs to be said. Say what's on your mind or in your heart so that the other person can see what's there. But also listen. Also just spend time with each other. And never forget that it's so important to address the things that need to be addressed. Do that. But also do it in a way that has a chance to be constructive. Love is all of that. I think that's the art of love and the art of life. Putting these things into practice. And at its core, love really is a decision. A decision to put on the glasses. A decision of what you do with it. A decision to do that again and again and again. It's a decision you have to make not just today, but every day. That's why marriage and relationships and all of this is hard work. Be prepared to do it. Be prepared to keep working at it, to figure it out, to start again if you need to. Commit to that again and again. Make those, those decisions again and again. The reason I've said so much about all that is that's your responsibility. That's the, what you do with it. Take that responsibility seriously. And it's not just a message for these two, it's a message for all of us in our lives and in our relationships. 
By the way, the fact that we are not perfect, and if you didn't know that, I have news for you. <laughs> your marriage, your relationship, your love, it will not be perfect. There's no chance of that. It's not perfection in those things that makes a good marriage. It's being willing to start with all of these things over and over again. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. And I want to encourage you to remember that the fact that we're not perfect, in my mind, makes it quite important that we have God in the picture. Because God does love perfectly. He is patient and kind. He forgives and keeps doing what's necessary. Even when we're not perfect. And we need that. So make space for Him in your lives. Draw strength from who He is and the fact that He deals with us like this. And let Him guide you. And that's that. Simple. But hard work. I hope that, like my vision with glasses, it's all clear. And I wish you the strength. I wish you the commitment. I wish you the love to make something good out of your marriage. And the peace of God, which is so much higher than we can ever understand. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are now going to sing the next hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. The brass band will, uh, the organ will play an introduction, and then we will sing along. Let us hear what the Bible has to say about love and marriage. First of all, concerning the relationship of a man and a woman in marriage, our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew said, Haven't you read that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, 
and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So sind Mann und Frau nun nicht mehr zwei, sondern eins. Was Gott zusammengefügt hat, das soll der Mensch nicht scheiden. I would like to ask the mother of the bride, Elisabeth Rommelsbacher, to come forward to do the next reading. What the Apostle, wrote, uh, Apostle Paul wrote there in the letter to the Romans about Christian fellowship is also true for marriage. Der Gott aber der Geduld und des Trostes gebe euch, dass ihr eines Sinnes seid untereinander, Jesus Christus gemäß damit ihr einmütig mit einem Munde Gott, den Vater, lobt. Darum nehmt einander an, wie Christus euch angenommen hat, zu Gottes Lob. Accept one another, as Christ has accepted you. Thank you, Elisabeth. Then I would like to call the brother of the bride, Karl, forward. He's going to read the third reading. Was Karl uns aus dem Kolosserbrief vorliest über das christliche Leben, stimmt auch über das Leben in der Ehe. So Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Vor allem aber bekleidet euch mit der Liebe. Sie ist das Band, das euch zu einer vollkommenen Einheit zusammenschließt. Thank you, Carl. Mit diesen Worten bezeugt die Heilige Schrift den Erstland als heilige und unverbrüchliche Ordnung Gottes. Carl and Claudia, these passages tell us that God wants to bless and protect your marriage but also that you have a responsibility for it. And that's why I want to ask you to come and stand in front of me and to make your vows to each other before God and before these witnesses. First you, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle Davis, will you love and honor Claudia Rommelsbacher as your wedded wife, whom God has entrusted to you? Do you promise to be true to her, to help and to care for her? Will you live together with her in accordance with God's promise and command, in good times and in bad, until death parts you? If this is what you want, then testify it before God and before these witnesses and answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. One who do, Claudia. Claudia Rommelsbacher, willst du Carl Davis, den Gott dir anvertraut hat, aus deinen Ehemann nehmen? Willst du ihn lieben und ehren und die Ehe mit ihm nach Gottes Gebot und Verheißung führen? Willst du ihm treu sein, ihm helfen und für ihn sorgen, in guten und in schweren Tagen, bis der Tod euch scheidet? So antworte, ja, mit Gottes Hilfe. Can I have the rings, please? I'm going to ask you to take these rings out of my hands and to exchange them, put them on each other's hands as symbols of your love and of your faithfulness to each other.
Can I ask you to join your right hands? Kyle and Claudia have promised themselves to each other before God and before all of you. They have exchanged rings and joined hands, showing their intention to keep this promise. And so it is my great pleasure to declare that Kyle Davis and Claudia Romsbacher, here present, have been lawfully married, and I pronounce them husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Kyle. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Thank goodness they practiced that yesterday. <laughs> we are now going to sing the next hymn. It is the hymn to God be the glory. And the two of you are welcome to take a seat for that. If I can ask you all to stand as we sing that hymn. This is one of those moments where I'm going to disappear. Wir singen zusammen, to God be the glory. and Claudia make their vows to each other. We saw them exchanging rings as a sign of their love and faithfulness. And now as a symbol of two lives becoming one, I want to ask them to light their wedding candle. And I want to encourage the two of you, it's quite a big candle, make use of it. Light it often. 
If you have something to celebrate as a family, light it. If you are going through a tough time, light it. And let it remind you of the vows that you've made today, the love that you have for each other, and the love that God has for you. While they do that, we will hear a piece of music von guten Mächten wunderbar geborgen. In English, that means by gracious powers wonderfully sheltered. Uh, it's a hymn that we enjoy singing. We will play that now, and I ask the two of you to take the candles, light them separately, and then light your wedding candle together. I'd like to ask you all to stand now. We are going to pray. I'm going to ask Kyle and Claudia to join me in front of the altar so that we can also speak God's blessing over them. As part of this prayer, we will also sing the Our Father together. Lasst uns beten. Herr unser Gott, du hast Mann und Frau füreinander geschaffen. Wir bitten dich für Kyle und Claudia, bewahre sie in ihre Ehe. Leite sie durch dein Wort und erhalte sie in deiner Liebe. We ask you to strengthen these two in constant faithfulness and true love towards each other. Support and protect them in the tough times. Help them to appreciate and celebrate the good times. As they go through life, give them a faith that carries, fellowship that builds up, and your blessing that gives life. Everything else that we have on our hearts and minds both our joys and concerns, our needs and our blessings, we bring before you by singing the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us.
And so receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord be ahead of you to show you the right way. The Lord be next to you to secure you in his arms and to guard you against threats from left and right. The Lord be behind you to shelter you against the rancor of the wicked. The Lord be under you to sustain you when you fall. The Lord be in you to comfort you in your sorrow. The Lord be above you to bless you. Möge der drei einige Gott auf dem Weg, den ihr vor euch habt, vor euch hergehen. Gott Vater, Sohn und Heilige Geist segne euch und eure Ehe. Er erleuchte euch durch sein Wort und erfülle euch mit seiner Gnade, dass ihr in seiner Gemeinde bleibt und zum ewigen Leben gelangt. Amen. Please have a seat. We are going to sing one more hymn. It is a very well-known German hymn of thanksgiving. Danke dem Herrn. Those words are taken from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. <laughs> official by signing the register. I'd like to ask the witnesses to come forward and join us for that. Währenddem wir das tun, hören wir Orgel und Bläser, die das Lied Große Gott, wir loben dich, as vorspielen. We will hear the hymn Mighty God, we praise your name, played by the organ and the brass band.
we are now going to go into the rest of this day and enjoy festivities together. And I like to encourage people to make the most of them. The world is not the easiest place to live in. Sometimes real challenges come our way. And those test our strength. Sometimes our strength is not enough. So we need some things that help us to increase our strength. Some of that comes from being able to rely on other people around us and on their strength. Some of that is being able to make the most of wonderful occasions and to remember them, to keep telling of them, to keep feeling what we felt when we did all that. And above all that is the fact that we can get strength that from, from the fact that we are in God's hands. And blessing has to do with that. It has to do with placing people into God's hands. And so as you go into this evening and make the most of it, go in the blessing of the Lord. Know that you are in His hands. And I ask you to stand to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you, look upon you with favor, and give you peace. So segne und behüte euch der allmächtige und barmherzige Gott, der Vater, der Sohn und der Heilige Geist. Amen. Please be seated. We are now going to hear a postlude. And as I make my way up to the brass band, I'm going to just say a few announcements. The postlude that you will hear now, you will hear that the brass band and the organ will play together. And that will clearly come to an end at a point, and then the organ will continue on its own. Please can I ask you to stay seated while the brass band plays, and then when the organ continues on its own, you stand up and leave the church. Please take some confetti at the exit, and then be ready to welcome the bridal couple. Group photos will be taken outside the church, so please keep an ear open for the photographer. Everyone is very welcome to tea and coffee outside. That includes making full use of the cappuccino stand and enjoying some cake and muffins. Those attending the reception can then leave here in around an hour's time at about half past three and make their way to Torwood Lee. Just a reminder to those who are transporting flowers, you know what to do. Thank <laughs> you.